So what does God have to do with the slut walk movement? Because I know you're asking the question. The slut walk movement began in January of 2011 when a Toronto police officer was talking with some law students and said that the best way for you to avoid being raped is to avoid dressing like a slut. Yeah, blame the victim. Well, this sparked a movement in Canada and the United States of people marching in the streets dressed like sluts. And what's going on here? Well, in one instance, you have someone who's blaming the victim of rape. And in another instance, you have people who are identifying with the victims of rape and trying to change a culture. So what does this have to do with theology? Well, it's interesting because in the Bible you have these two different views of who God is. One view says that God stands with the perpetrators of violence, and the other view says that God stands with the victims of violence. Not only stands with the victims of violence, but God actually becomes a victim of violence, identifies with victims. So you see this strand throughout the Bible, and it's there in the very beginning. So you have Cain and Abel, and Cain kills his brother Abel, and Abel cries out, and God hears the voice of Abel. Abel, the victim, has a voice with God. And you see this in Joseph, who becomes the victim of his brothers. And you see that throughout Joseph's life, God is working through his life in order to make the world a better place. And you also see this in the life of Sarah, who is barren, and God works through Sarah in order to make the world a better place. And you see this in the books of Ruth and Esther, where there are these two women who are already marginalized in a patriarchal culture, and yet they have a voice with God, and God works through them in order to make the world a better place. And you also see in the, in the Psalms where God is there with the victim. The victim cries out to God and demands that God stands with the victim of violence. And that's where God is. God hears the voice of the victim. And you see this in the suffering servant in Isaiah. And ultimately you see this in the life of Jesus who becomes a victim of human violence. And throughout Christian traditions, Christians have believed that Jesus is the one who concretely represents who God is. There's something divine about Jesus and Jesus or God in Jesus becomes a victim of human violence. And so what does this mean for the slut walks? It means that God becomes a slut. God becomes identified with those who are outcasted in society, those we call sluts. That's where you find God. But the other thing that I want to mention is that there's kind of a message within the movement that says we can dress however we want to dress, we can have sex with whomever we want to have sex with. And in one sense, the, the movement is against men who aren't out for having really sex, they're out for having power. This is what rape is about. It's about feeling a sense of power. And the movement is getting into a dangerous spot when it uh, when it mirrors that sense of wanting to have power back. So you have this idea, it doesn't matter how many people we want to have sex with, that it's a good thing to have sex with hundreds of people. That's, that's a dangerous place to go because it mirrors exactly that which we are fighting against, this sense of having power through sex. Sex is meant to be shared between people who love each other, who care for each other. If it's not, it becomes abuse because we end up using one another for our own sexual gratification. So once we have this experience of God identifying with us, whomever we are, we're never left the same. We're changed into people who care about our own bodies and also care about the bodies of others and seek to fulfill a loving mutual relationship with one another. So those are my thoughts on theology and slut walks, and I would love to hear what you think. Thanks.